Hello, I'm Bill Harris. Welcome to Life Questions. It appears that wherever we turn in life, people are in search for truth. Well, this is a program that provides biblically based answers to the challenging questions about you and life. And if you'll stay with us, you may find some good answers to the vital questions that you have about life. Today, you'll also learn how to contact us with your questions. Now, before we begin our first question, let's meet our panel of ministers who are here to take a hard look at the many questions sent in by our viewers. First is pa uh, Pastor Bob Wardle of New Life Assembly here in Lima, Ohio, followed by Pastor Daniel Messner of Shawnee Alliance of Lima. And then there's Pastor Ed Reinhardt of Emmanuel Kettlersville and St. Peter's New Bremen, followed by Pastor Shelley Stevenson of Christ Covenant Church of Bell Fountain, Ohio. We welcome all of you to the program today. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to have you with us. Now, one of the questions that we got is dealing with the issue of bullying. Mm -hmm. And you know, let's take this one step further to not only bullying among, ch among children, but it also happens among adults. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's, let's address that first of all. Who, who wants to take that issue on first? The issue of bullying. What, what's the whole premise behind bullying? I think it's been around forever. Mm -hmm. Even when we were in school, there were people who were bullied, but now it just seems like the devil has, you know, ramped up um, the the effects of the bullying, the intensity um, with the, the cyber bullying. But oh, to yeah. me, it's it's so real when you have children as young as 10 and 12 who are affected deeply by that to the point of not wanting to live. So there's a deep underlying, you know, push by Satan in, in that realm. And we take it very seriously, but I don't really understand the shift from when we were kids to where we are now. Something mm -hmm. has truly shifted. Well, a lot of it, you know, when we was in school, it was, it was a little bit more personal. It was among a few friends or whatever it might've been. And now it is, like you said, it's social media. Mm -hmm. And wow, when you begin to start defaming somebody on social media, that's, that's something that is, that is just so widespread and so begins to get deeper and deeper. That's right. So it's a big issue now and so many lives are being affected. Uh, and we talked a little bit about the, um, how it was affecting so many ki uh, kids and teens and how many of us are dealing with suicide. Uh, among our teenagers, and again with the adults, so it's a big it's a big issue, and again the church needs to try to address this right. with with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think part of how it has ramped up is because of the social media, mm -hmm. but it used to be you able, was able to get away from it. You get on the bus, you went home, you were home, mm -hmm. and you were in the safe environment safe. of home. I don't, we don't have the safe environments of homes anymore. I mean, the breakdown of the family that has taken place, uh, the divorce, the separation, the neighborhoods, et cetera. I lived in the country. I could see living in town how much more um, the challenge is because we're moving around more. We're in, and, and, there, and there's used to be you didn't have a sports game every night of the week. Um, you, I mean, it was everything is impacted to put more pressure on the family. And I think the breakdown of the family, the more stress on the family, the more stress on the kids. When are kids kids? And when, when are they allowed to have that downtime? And so I think a lot of that goes into it. Um, my son was bullied in, in, in school. Uh, it, 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 it takes place. I, and I also see it in, in adults, adults bullying other adults because they want their kid to get that scholarship. Mm -hmm. uh, they want their kid to be, they bully coaches. Mm -hmm. um, they, they want, there's an agenda behind um, their behavior, and they don't realize that it actually fits the classification of bullying. But how do we co teach them how to cope with it? Like I said, bullying's gonna happen, it's happening. And I think in the home, they're not being taught how to cope. We know the only way to cope is through the Word of God, to teach these kids, you know, okay, you're being bullied, but you're not that person. You are not what they say you are. You are who God says you are. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like they have no coping skills, and they get to that place and they're done. You know, they just, they want to die. They want to end it or they want to hurt somebody else. So that's where I think the church is a catalyst to teach them how to cope. And that's knowing who they truly are. That's our, one of our biggest responsibilities. And, and bullying causes that fight or flight response. And so they're either going to run away and, and both end up in a suicide, either mental suicide where they um, die inwardly and, or an outwardly type way. So bullying has that effect. And so yes, the coping, 
And we've got to teach their identity in Christ. Yes. We've got to okay. teach them that they're loved. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to provide them safe havens. Uh, we've got to be able to take the, the Internet and, and social media away so that they do have that break. We've got to give them positive outlets. It, it, it's an important thing to let the kids have their own hobbies. And, and they don't have to be with friends 24-7 and... It's okay. Do you think, Pastor Messner, that bullying preys on the person, be they an adult or a child, that has low self-esteem to begin with and just pushes them over the edge with it? I think that, uh, I think back in my own high school days and all that, that, uh, that it was always the person that seemed to be more the odd individual of, you know, the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, some were automatically picked on simply because of how they carried themselves or the family they came from. I hate to say it, but the skin color, that was horrible. You know, and so I think there's automatic ways that people say, this is what I don't like about this person. And you know, it's the same old problem is that when you bully someone, it's because you get a group of other people that are now against an individual. I mean, that even happens in the church. You know, we don't like the pastor or we don't like this individual. So we get two or three people yes. that have the same attitude yes. and the same, you know, evil intent to bring harm to the person. That's all bullying is, is bring harm to the person. But I think for me, as I look about, where did the world go from the one I knew when I left high school to the world is exactly. today? Exactly. You know, and I've pastored in most of that. Where'd that world go? And it comes down to this, is that, we no longer have any filters or any standards of right and wrong. Right. That's it, they're mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. And it almost reminds me of the Greek culture of the Romans. Mm -hmm. You know, the Romans were brutal towards each other and the, and the Christians suffered under that because there was no filter. There was no value of a human being. Mm -hmm. And that's not taught anywhere today, nowhere. You can use the word respect or you can word or tolerance or I don't like that word, but you can use any of those words. But the fact of the matter is there's nothing in our fiber as a society anymore that says this is wrong. Mm -hmm. right. You know, back in my day, if someone's getting bullied, there probably was a fight because someone's going to stand up for them. Exactly. That didn't happen today. No. And, you know, in the fight, and that was the way it was. It's not that way anymore. And I think you're right that so much of it is social media. I mean, even people that call them adults, you know, on the media, they they bully everyone. Just right. look at the way they communicate. Look at the way the news is broadcast. So if I'm a child of 9, 10, 11 years of age and I don't come from a solid home, what am I going to end up believing? It's okay for me to do that or it's going to happen to me. And it does happen to me. Mm -hmm. Very good. I, th I think we've exhausted that, uh, that discussion. Let's move on to scary movies. That's what they're coming to be called, scary movies. and. There seems to be a sinister aspect in them these days that is meant to do more than just scare you. There is a, a satanic element about it that is so different than the best semester, as you were talking about way back when you were a kid, when I was a kid. Uh, it wasn't just to kind of scare you and say, oh, that was a good thrilling movie. But now it's, it's much deeper than that. Um, why, why is it going this way? Well, I think it's Pastor. Dan said here just a few moments ago, the standards of our society, there is no right or wrong or anything in any of it. So now we're seeing this, this uh, all moral standards are becoming, are dropping. So we're, it's just a, an overall society of no, no standards. And so whatever is on TV, this is what we're grasping a hold of. And it's, uh, so, and there is, when, when it comes down to the scary side of it, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, I guess we're growing up it has become so much worse now as you know most of us here at this table at our age we was growing up we saw some of the what what we considered scary movies Dark Shadow, are nothing or <laughs> yeah. i'm still haunted by it yeah. it affects you yeah. even yeah. from a young age yeah but nothing in comparison to what is out there today some of the mm -hmm. stuff i think we was talking a little bit before uh, you know you even if you go to a movie 15 to 20 minutes before the movie starts most of the previews of the movies that are coming out are, are, are right in your grill with mm -hmm. so much demonic activity, so much sinister, so much, and this is what, and we're seeing it in our video games, and we're seeing it in so yes. many, so many different forms of media that it's, it's 
impacting this generation as they're growing up because it's in front of them all the time. You know, I grew up with about seven channels on TV. And so it wasn't like it is today. We didn't have computers. We didn't have electronic devices. We didn't have all of these things. Now, this stuff, wherever we are, it's, you turn it on, it's everywhere. It's everywhere in front of you. Is it okay for our children to go see these movies? We have the rating system. I mean, the rating system's there. What, well, why are you guys you laughing for? I mean, can you yeah, trust that? You, you, are you, trust it. It's there. <laughs> I mean, they, they, I mean, after all, the, the 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 theaters have responsibility to make sure the kids of age, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so you, that's a great point because really what I think we're dealing with is a lack of knowledge and that's where God's people perish because even in the church, you know, there are so many church members watching The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, they don't know the harm. They haven't been taught that and they need to be taught that because it can definitely affect. So like you said, oh, it's a PG, they can go. So what it well, teaches PG, this PG and that. PG-13, right, NC-17, right. uh, I, mean, I mean, we have the ratings, but we, we, we ignore the ratings. But even, uh, the, I, even on the video games, they're rated mature. mature. And, and yet we buy them for our 13, 12, 13, 10 year old kids to play and they're rated mature. They're supposed to be 18 and above. And, and we buy it for them because they want it. And we're not providing the filter. The filter was lost. We're not doing that. So then we're introducing the thought. We're building that anxiety. We're building mm -hmm. the, the angst. We're building the adrenaline need, the rush, the addiction to the adrenaline, et cetera. And we've got to have our adrenaline fix. Uh, we, where, where does it begin? The question for me is, is why do you want to watch it? But I mean, I but as believers, we're not setting the standard in our homes. You know, as well, Christian believers, we're not. And so we're allowing, and I think you're saying at the same time, it's not about us allowing the world to set the standard. So we, just because a movie says it's rated R, what are we teaching well, our children at home? What are, what's our filter? I mean, yeah. we, did away, we did away with cable TV. Yes, we did away with cable TV mm -hmm. in this age. I mean... Just getting rid of the the, the commercials. <laughs> and, and, Are they and, scary too? Well, <laughs> it just the it, the bombardment of 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 every, uh, of you got to have this new car, you got to have this new house, you have to have this lawn care. You got to. I mean, it, it's constant commercial bombardment. I mean, every every day. And and so, at what point do you start absorbing that, even if you don't intend to absorb? And so even watching the scary movies, what are you walking away with? I mean, you just said that the, the one movie, Shadows. Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows Barnabas uh, still scares me. I, and that was, a, that was, you know, a soap opera, but it did affect me. It, it, it will. Yes. Because our mind is a videotape. And, and, it, and, it, and, and, and it will record everything we see, do, et cetera. And it, it's, it's processed into our, our mind. And when you come in a situation, you have those events start to replay. Etc. Etc. What are you putting in into your body? What are you allowing in? So the question of is it all right to watch them? Should should we do it? Why do you want to? What's what's your point of watching it? Becomes the real question. I remember the first time I was in Israel, and it was an education a tour, and our professor had a stand in the middle of a theater of the day. An outdoor theater. Now, I don't think of a theater like we have today. But an outdoor theater, and they would flood the base of that theater so that they would sail in these little boats, and literally it would be what boat with the crew could kill the other crew. Mm. And then once that battle was over, they would wash out the blood and the water and then start over again. And the amphitheater was full. Mm. And I'll never forget his question. He said, so you become a Christian in this culture and you used to do that for entertainment. Do you still go back? Hmm. I don't think anything's changed. If we say we're a follower of Jesus Christ, that simply means we separate ourselves. Right. And separation, it's gonna be a little different for all of us. I, need to, I think we need to say that. Mm -hmm. But the question that we should be asking as a believer, does this further my relationship with Jesus Christ exactly. as a disciple? And am I now 
portraying the values of the kingdom of God. Jesus was countercultural. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Christians are called to be countercultural. And that's a little bit different for everyone. I mean, Paul had to argue about can you eat meat to sacrifice to idols, or what day do you go to church on Romans chapter 14. But the point is, I'll never forget my professor's question. You're a Christian now. Do you continue to come and watch this? Mm. Or do you separate yourself because you're part of a new culture? Right. Right. That was a Roman culture. Mm. And we don't have those things going on. Well, and I think also, you know, the, the, I think the, the text that you would be advocating would be, I think it's 1 Corinthians 10, 23. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. They don't build up. They don't edify. So I think we ought to ask ourselves, and I can remember maybe it's just an old adage, but if... Uh, if Jesus was in the room as a Christian, if Jesus was in the room, would you be watching this? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good little question to ask ourselves every once in a while. Would I be entertaining myself with this or watching this if I knew that Jesus was sitting? He, he is there. Mm -hmm. right. you know, right. He is there. Very good discussion. We want to turn our attention to some other things, but we're going to take a break. When we come back, we want to talk about social conscious investing. Are there certain things that Christians should not invest in in the stock market. We want to take up that issue when we come back along with Bible study right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we're back. And uh, with this half of the program, let's start off with a discussion to answer the question whether or not Christians should invest in certain things in the stock market that may be ha that may have as the the, um, the underlying assets things that go against our our beliefs uh, in say for instance investing in companies that produce weapons of war uh, companies that produce tobacco products uh, companies that produce things that uh, contribute to abortion or the like uh, what do you have to say about how Christians should invest I think we'd, we'll start with you pastor well, so you have a background you know, in finance. I, I, I did study to be a stockbroker at one point. Um, so we'll just throw out there right now, uh, no truth in lending laws are going to be broken and, and all of those kind of things. And this is not advice on financial that you can go, go do, your, do your life with. So, Note the disclosure. Yeah, so yeah. all the disclosure <laughs> statements, blip them on the screen now. Um, so can you invest? The answer is yes. Should you invest? That's up to you. It becomes risk level that you're willing to take. So are there companies out there that are mutual funds out there in Pacific that do not uh, promote or invest in companies that are tobacco, alcohol, firearms, and, and are social conscious? Social conscious investing and invest, is what it's called. And, yeah. and there are. Um, if, if individuals are really interested in this topic and they want to go to DaveRamsey.com, uh, Dave Ramsey does talk about this. Uh, there is a fund called the Timothy Fund that is, is doing well, has done well, um, et cetera, that people could look into. Again, talk to your broker about that if, if interested. I, part of this goes back to you pay your taxes. And so you pay your taxes to the government. You don't have authority over where all your money goes. Right. So when you get involved in the stock market or specifically mutual funds, you're investing in such a mall minuscule, I mean, you might have a hundred different companies in that one fund. That's easy. So That's how, how mm -hmm. many dollars are we really talking, or you're investing in that one company? Mm -hmm. And so that becomes, I mean, how much of that is, is, are you really aware of and are you worried about? Yet you go to the store and you buy groceries off the shelf, you buy items at the store, et cetera. How much of those things um, are parent companies to other things? Mm -hmm and subsidiary, et cetera. So are you helping those companies when you buy the products direct rather than through the stock market? You end up doing more for the company 
buying the things off the shelf, buying the cars, buying TV, mm -hmm. buying cable, et cetera. You probably, probably do more for buying your cable and paying for your cable monthly or your Verizon cell phone bill or Sprint or, or whichever it is. You probably do more toward uh, social ills in those areas than you do through a mutual fund. So if you're gonna get into the topic, you really need to step back and, and, and balance that out. Um, okay. and, and that becomes part of the, the challenge. So there are funds out there uh, and things that way, so. Mm -hmm. Anybody else wanna chime in with anything, uh, any concerns you may have along this area at all? Not Before with the start, stock market, but along the same lines, I'm a Starbucks fan. I like Starbucks oh, coffee, oh, right? Oh. So, so where do right? Where oh, do you begin? Oh, there's social ills there. Right? Oh, Come oh, on yeah. now. So, where do you draw that line? It's the same kind of, of it, okay. What do I do? Um, do I avoid all? It, that may be avoid every, all but, Starbucks. Yes, all no, Starbucks. Just kidding, every we're single kidding, Starbucks. Folks. But I mean, mm -hmm. even other places to yeah. go to eat, to shop. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't always know what's going on behind the mm -hmm. scenes. I really don't know what is, you know, going into that. Mm -hmm. I just know who I am when I step into that place. Sure. I just know that, that I, that's not going to change who I am. Um, and so, you know, how do you deal with that? Do you, as pastors, do you avoid those places or do you go in and just be who you are and, 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 and take what you have there and, and hopefully hopefully be some kind of, of, of change or some kind of, you know, make some little difference in mm -hmm. going and getting that I, grande. I think as followers of Christ that, and we'll use Starbucks. I don't drink coffee, so it makes no difference to me. But you know, I, I've developed such a mindset, and it's not because I'm a pastor, because I'm a, a follower of Christ. That in every situation, sometimes going to the same place so I get to know the waiter or the waitress on a personal level. Yes. I have a associate pastor. I took him away from another church to hire him. But he went to the same <laughs> gas <on> station <laughs> every day. And guess what? The same clerk that helped him, when his family had a tremendous loss, mm -hmm. guess who they turned to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. They turned to him. Yes. And, you know, where can you go in society that is not being influenced by things we don't believe in? That and is want? right. But the bigger question is, how do we bring Jesus into that setting? There it is. You know, you go to Starbucks and you meet with the same clerk and there you get is. to know Betty Lou, whatever her name is, yes. or Carl. And after a while, Carl knows you and guaranteed there's going to be a conversation where you're going to be able to be exactly who Jesus would be. Amen. That's to me the issue. And I loved your answer. You know, I don't know how to answer this. Yeah, right. My stock market, my portfolio is doing real well. Thank you, you know, for the Congress, <laughs> what we're doing now. But to some degree, I have no control over any of that stuff. Absolutely none. You know, there are places that you can go and, and the broker will help you select those. And if that's your choice, and that's what you believe, it's then you go there. And we have those privileges in this country. We're fortunate. I mean, I've been around this world, and the people don't get these choices in other places that's in the world. Exactly. They just yeah, do right. it trying right. to survive right. Right. every day. So I really appreciate your response. Yeah. And I think the issue is, are we bringing Jesus to our setting? Always. Right. Whatever store it is, whatever purchase it is. Right. I think that was that was very informative because it really helps us understand it's impossible. We really can't, you know, separate ourselves from everything. And, you know, it comes back, I guess, to the old adage, we're in this world, but we're not of it. Mm -hmm. And so, as Pastor Dan said, I think it's about what we're going to do. How are we going to influence Absolutely. Uh, our society? How are we going to influence the culture around us? What are we going to bring when we come in to Starbucks or when we come in to Target? Or when we come into some of these stores, yes. what are we going to do? And uh, how are we going to allow our lights to shine yep. and, and, and be an influence? Because it's impossible, really, in this world. Mm. Mm. All right, I, I want to turn to another topic. I certainly hate to do it with, say, less than four minutes to go, but Bible study, mm. the importance of Bible study, the, the integrity of the Word of God. Always under attack, but it seems like it's increasingly more and more so under attack in this day and time. A question came in from viewers about how to begin Bible study. But I think somebody here mentioned earlier before we taped 
that it's important to understand that the Word of God is authentic. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it is powerful. C can you lead us down that path? I think Pastor Dan had a good stat, was that, so was I'd that like that, for him to uh, uh, expound a little bit on that. Well, I said earlier that there's a Barner report that those who claim to be evangelical Christians, and that means you believe Jesus Christ died and the only way to heaven is Jesus, and only 8% of them believe that the Bible is inspired by God. Now, I hope my statistic is wrong, but I don't think I am. But I'll never forget this. I rode across America on my bicycle, and one of the days we were riding, and one guy came up alongside him and said, so what do you do for a living? And he says, I said, well, I'm a pastor. He goes, well, I don't believe in God. I said, well, okay, that's okay. And then he, for the next two hours, drilled me with every type of Bible question you could think of. <laughs> and one of the questions he asked me is, how do you know the Bible's true? And I went back to the history. I had been in Israel and I said, do you know there's a museum called the scroll, which where the prophet, the book of Isaiah, the oldest Isaiah prophet, I mean book, is put in a cylinder every night into the ground in a bomb-proof mm. building. And I talked about the history and how it was part of the Israelites' lives. And then I made this statement to him. If you believe the Bible, you cannot separate from Jesus Christ. They go hand in hand. You cannot say, I don't believe in the Bible, yet I believe in Jesus, because Jesus was the fulfillment of it. Mm -hmm. And once we understand that what we're doing when we're reading the Bible is about discovering the person who God revealed himself in, and that's Jesus. And Bible study then becomes personal. Yeah. It's not just, I learn a verse. I get tired of Christians that can spew out verses, but they couldn't understand a relationship with Jesus if it hit them, mm -hmm. all right? Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. They love Jesus, they're going to heaven. But the point is, is that the Bible is God's love letter to us. Yes. How can you miss it? Yes. It's what it is. Yeah. You it's know, we letter. grew up with the Word of God in our house, and a lot of the people we're ministering to now honestly have never read the right. Bible. Mm, right. Like, they don't know what the Gospels are. They don't even know who Noah is. And then it's starting at grassroots again, which I, I'm so blessed to be a part of the church who knows the importance of the word. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are illiterate. They cannot, they cannot read that well, but that's not an excuse. We have to start somewhere with them and teach them the basics, even yeah. though they may be adults. How do you do that? Where do you start? Well, we've, think, only got less, we've got less than 90 seconds. I think the church has to get, get back to that the Bible is the inspired word of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable mm -hmm. for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for inspiration in righteousness, right? Yes, for correction in absolutely. righteousness. Absolutely. And uh, I think we've got to get back to the church, the church, the pastors, the pulpit, has to get back to expository preaching. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the, I think that's a big area that we are really neglecting. Yes. And this is one of the reasons why our, our congregations are sitting there without a passion for God's word. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to get a passion back for the word of God. There's got to be a passion to say, I want to know what he just said, Amen. what the pastor just the now life. preached behind the pulpit. Wow, I want to go dig deeper into that. Mm -hmm. There's got to be an excitement. I think uh, John Piper uses the word Christian hedonism, as though I've I find my complete satisfaction in yes. the Word of God and who Jesus Christ Amen. is. All right, well, we're going to have to end it at that note. I, I, I apologize for bringing that up so late, <laughs> but uh, I did want to get yes. that in. It's a valid you. question. Thank you very much. I certainly have enjoyed you this weekend, you. last week, and all that you bring to the table. Appreciate you. That's our program for today. We'll be back again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. God bless you. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. 
Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.